Hey Brian, I'm sorry to bother you during your business trip, but I wanted to ask you about Saturday. Irene? What is it? I'm busy. So can you please make it quick? I know, I know, I'm sorry. I was thinking about going to visit my younger brother and his family this Saturday. Do you want to come along? Your younger brother? You mean Roger? Hold on. Didn't you say his company sent him to their headquarters overseas for a few years? Is he really back? Yeah, he's back temporarily. It'll just be about three months or so. I think he said it had something to do with his visa, but, but he also has some meetings with people over here, so it was kind of good timing. I didn't actually know about all of this until a few hours ago, but he apparently got back to the country last night. Oh, well, that's nice. So yeah, he called me and asked if I wanted to come over and bring the family with me to spend some time together. Okay, well, let me think. I've got work in the morning on Saturday that'll last me until noon, I think. So as long as it's after that, sure, I can go. Great. Thanks, Brian. Do you think you could get back home in time to leave around 1 p.m.? Hmm. That would be cutting it a little bit close. I'd like to have some time to shower and get some lunch. How about leaving at 2 p.m. instead? Would that be all right? Yeah, sure. That should be fine. I'll go ahead and tell Roger the good news. I'm so excited to go and see him! Oh, and by the way, what about his wife, Rachel, and daughter, Millie? Are they going to be home? Yeah, I don't see why they wouldn't be. Oh, you know what? That's right. This will be the first time you've ever met Millie, won't it? She is adorable. I'm sure you'll love her. Yeah, I'll bet. The last time I saw Rachel was... at their wedding. I think... man... to think that Roger got sent overseas just a month after his wedding... That must have been really hard on both him and Rachel. Even worse, Rachel only found out she was pregnant after Roger had already left. They must have had a pretty rough time of things these last few years. Yeah, I can't imagine how it must have been for Rachel to give birth alone. Fortunately, she was able to move in with her parents while Roger was overseas. And they've been really helpful with taking care of both Rachel and Millie. If it wasn't for them, I don't know how Rachel could have handled all of that by herself. And to think about Roger's situation, too. They've been able to talk using video calls and all that, but he had never held his own almost two-year-old daughter until yesterday. Wow. Roger told me that the worst part of all this is that Millie doesn't call him daddy yet. <laughs> the poor guy. I'm sure it'll just take a little bit of time to get accustomed to him, though. <laughs> yeah, that must be pretty hard to deal with. Okay, I need to wrap this up pretty quick. So to confirm, we'll be leaving for Roger's place on Saturday at 2 p.m. Is that right? Anything else? Yeah, I'll need to call him one more time to make sure the timing will be all right. But I don't see why it would be a problem. So for all intents and purposes, we can consider it a done deal. If something does change, though, I'll be sure to let you know as soon as I can. Gotcha. Thanks, Irene. Okay, I gotta get back to work now. So I'm not gonna be able to respond to messages for a few hours. Talk to you later. Thanks for your time, Brian. Enjoy the rest of your day. Brian, did you really have to leave early for work? You said you'd be done after noon. We were having so much fun. Yeah... I'm really sorry about that, Irene. I guess there was a big problem at work that they needed me to be there for. But yeah, I had a great time today. It was a lot of fun. We should go back there again soon. Yeah, for sure. It had been a while since I'd seen her, but Rachel was just as chipper and lively as I remember her. And that Millie, she's an absolute doll, isn't she? I wish I'd been able to meet her sooner. She was such an angel. Yeah, she's adorable. Lucky for you, too, she took a liking to you right away, didn't she? She was playing with you just about the whole time you were there. Now that I think about it, she called you Daddy when you first walked in the door, didn't she? 
That was cute. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that. That was a big surprise to me, too. <laughs> I wonder if... Maybe Millie just calls all the adult men she meets daddy. You know, kids will sometimes call their school teacher's mom by mistake. Yeah, I don't know about that. You know, I bet it was more to do with her real father, Roger, being overseas for nearly all her life. She probably doesn't really understand the concept of father very well. Maybe. But man, she really was a little darling. I might just have to kidnap her away from Roger, lock her in our basement, and make her think she's my daughter instead. <laughs> Uh, Roger, that's super duper creepy. Like, seriously gross. Come on, what are you thinking saying something like that to me? Knock it off, and don't ever talk like that again, alright? Whoa, relax, Irene. Jeez. Sorry, I didn't mean for you to get so upset like that. It was just a joke, okay? I was just joking. I'm not really gonna kidnap her. Yeah, well, it wasn't a funny one. It was just creepy and weird. What was even the joke there, that you're secretly a kidnapping psychopath? Not to mention Millie is Roger and Rachel's daughter, and she's our niece. Uh, yeah. I know that. How do you think the two of them would feel if you told that joke in front of them? You'd be lucky if Roger didn't punch you right in the face. So, stop trying to be a comedian, because if all you've got are jokes like that, your career is going to go nowhere fast. Alright, alright, I got it. I'm sorry, Irene. Really. Ugh, sometimes you are so bizarre, Roger. I'm going to take a shower. See you in the morning. Okay. Good night, Irene. Hey, Roger. You got a minute? I wanted to talk to you about something. Hey, Irene. Thanks again for stopping by last Saturday. It was great to see you and Brian again. Sorry he had to leave early, though. Actually, Brian is the person that I wanted to talk to you about. Really? Is something going on with him? Well, this is really hard to say, and I know it's not going to make you happy to hear, but... I'm suspicious about Brian and Rachel. And by suspicious, you mean... I think Brian and Rachel are having an affair. What? Oh, are you talking about how Millie was calling Brian her daddy? I'm sorry, Roger. I really hate myself for feeling this way. I mean, accusing my own husband of having an affair with my own brother's wife? But I just can't keep the thought of it out of my mind. I mean, honestly, would a little girl like that really call some man she's never met her daddy? Once I got a weird feeling about that, it's been stuck in my mind ever since. I can't seem to flush it out no matter what I do. Ah, uh, yeah. I know what you mean. Put yourself in my shoes. This is my daughter, who's almost two years old. I haven't even met her. And in all that time, I've been working my butt off in a foreign country. And then when I finally get home, she won't even call me daddy? It really sucks. And it's not just the calling him daddy thing. She seemed really friendly with him, like they'd played before together a bunch of times in the past. The more I think about it, the more suspicious details I notice. So, yeah, I just can't get the thought out of my head that... Maybe Millie's real father is actually Brian. Mm -hmm. It's not that I want to feel this way. I'm not trying to hurt you, but like I said, the more I think about it, the more it makes sense. Brian says that he had never been to your house, but did you notice how he didn't need to ask where the bathroom was? He just went right to it. He acted like he was already familiar with the layout. So, it seems to me like he has seen Rachel after the wedding. He has been to your house before, and he has met Millie a bunch of times. At least that's how I feel. Man. I'm really sorry to bring this up to you, Roger. But I just couldn't bear to keep these feelings bottled up inside anymore. 
Nah, you don't have anything to be sorry for. Thanks for telling me all this, Irene. But I do think that we shouldn't come to any big conclusions without having any hard evidence. I know. All we have is circumstantial evidence, nothing actually definitive. Right. I think what we should do next is just keep a watch on them for a while, to look for any other odd behavior. Did you have a sort of plan in mind? Yeah, I told you. I'm in the same boat as you. It's been bothering me ever since Millie was calling Brian Daddy last Saturday. So I think the best thing to do is the one surefire, 100% reliable way to find out the truth of the matter. What are you thinking? For now, do you think we could meet and discuss things in person? This conversation is going to be a pretty important one. I don't want to have to do it through text. We'll be able to communicate better in person than by sending one message at a time. I get out of work at around 5 p.m. tomorrow. Do you think we could meet up at a cafe or restaurant? Or something to talk? Yeah, that sounds good. I'll meet you at the cafe by the bus station downtown at 6 o'clock, is that okay? Sure, that sounds great. See you then. Thanks, Roger. I'll see you tomorrow. You too, Irene. Good night. Hey, Irene. Just checking to make sure you got home all right. Thanks for meeting with me today. Yep, I just got home a few minutes ago. The plan you came up with was pretty good. I think that would be the perfect way to figure out if they're hiding something from us. Yeah, and hey, if it turns out that they're innocent, then that's fine. All's well that ends well. Yeah, and if they really are incorrect, then we agree that we'll both go to them and apologize for ever doubting them, right? Yeah. If they're innocent, they'll definitely deserve an apology. Irene! What's going on here? Why did your lawyer send me these divorce papers? Ah, uh, so they served you with no issues then. That's good to know. If you need to contact me, I'll be at my parents' house. Would you mind telling me just what the hell's gotten into you? Why are you trying to divorce me? What did I do to deserve this? I've been nothing but good to you! Nothing but good, huh? Do you really think you haven't done anything to deserve this? Really? Irene, if you've got something to say, then say it! Spit it out! Don't beat around the bush! Okay, fine, I'll get to the point. I know that Millie isn't really Roger's daughter. Actually, I'm pretty sure that she's yours. What? What in the world are you talking about? Are you nuts? Millie is Roger and Rachel's daughter! You and I both know that! There's no way I could be Millie's real father! No way? No way at all. Are you sure about that? Okay, then would you mind explaining why Millie calls you Daddy? And why you knew the layout of the Roger's house without asking? We've been through this before. She doesn't understand what it means to call someone Daddy! She only met her Daddy just a few weeks ago! And as for her house, I knew where the bathroom was because I saw Roger going in there before I went! It's not like it was some labyrinthine maze or something, it was just a two-story suburban house! She did know he was her daddy, though. They had talked on video chat countless times over the last several years. Admit it, Roger. Millie called you daddy because you are her father. And you knew the layout of the Roger's house because you've been there tons of times before. I told you, none of that is true! You're still sticking to your story, then? Hey, if you've got some kind of evidence that I'm lying, then let's see it! And if you don't have any, then I think you'd better start apologizing to me pretty goddamn quick! Do you have any idea how much it hurts to have your wife accuse you of having an affair? And having a child with her own brother's wife? What's wrong with you? Oh, I can imagine it would hurt very much to have your wife accuse you of an affair. But can you imagine how much it hurts to be cheated on, you good-for-nothing jerk? Hey, you can't talk to me that way! I do have evidence, Brian. You do? 
Yes, I do. First, Roger took some of his and Millie's hair and had a paternity test done. And, uh, what were the results? The results were conclusive. Roger is not Millie's father. Next, when Roger told Rachel about the paternity test, what do you think she told him, Brian? Hmm? What do you suppose she said next? I'll tell you what she told him. Everything! She told him all about your affair, and how you've been going to see her and Millie regularly, and about how you've been lying about going on business trips to see them. Everything! <laughs> yeah, that must be pretty hard to deal with. Okay, I need to wrap this up pretty quick, so to confirm, we'll be leaving for Roger's place on Saturday at 2 p.m. Is that right? Anything else? Yeah, I'll need to call him one more time to make sure the timing will be right. But I don't see why it would be a problem. So for all intents and purposes, we can consider it a done deal. And yes, you were fully aware that Millie was your daughter. I know about that too. So you shouldn't have acted surprised when she called you daddy that day. Because according to Rachel, you've been telling her to call you daddy. That's... that's not... Oh, would you just give it up already? You're not fooling anyone, Brian. Act like a man for once in your life. Damn it. Fine! I admit it! I was sleeping with Rachel. I'm Millie's father. I was cheating on you for the last two years. There! Are you happy now? Huh? You happy, Irene? Honestly, why did you ever agree to go to their house with me? Didn't you think that you would do something that would tip us off to your affair? Yeah. Well, I'd spent so much time talking to Rachel about how to act in order to not raise any suspicions that I completely forgot about the fact Millie always calls me daddy. That was a pretty massive oversight. Now come on, Irene, let's talk about this. Don't divorce me! Are you joking? Did you think there was any chance that I would forgive you? You betrayed not only my trust, but my brother's trust too. Do you have any idea what kind of damage you've done to my family? I'm gonna break it off with Rachel, okay? That would solve everything! And what about Millie, huh? What are you gonna do about her? Well... In any case, there's not a single thing that you could do to change my mind. We're through. I'm going to sue both you and Rachel for your affair, and I'll be expecting a lump sum payment, so be ready for that. I suggest you get right to work sorting out the financing, because it's going to be a big judgment. Oh, and Roger's going to sue you too, of course, just so you're not surprised. Damn it! This is the worst! How can you do this to me, Irene? I'm your husband, aren't I? Don't you have any feelings for me at all? We've been through so much together. You can't just end it like this. One, you're not going to be my husband for much longer. Two, no, I have zero feelings left for you. And three, I absolutely can and will end it like this. Wait, Irene, let's talk this over first. If you want to communicate with me, you can talk to my lawyer. Goodbye. Millie's not my daughter! What the? We haven't spoken in a year and this is how you open our conversation? You'll never believe what Rachel did to me, Irene. After we divorced, Rachel and I decided to get married and raise Millie together as a normal family. But it turns out, I wasn't the only guy she was sleeping with way back then. She had another boyfriend. And when we had a paternity test done, it turns out that Millie was his, not mine. Wait a minute. You got married without even getting a paternity test on Millie? Why would I get a paternity test? I thought Rachel loved me. She told me I was the only guy she loved. I am shocked. Shocked. To find out that Rachel was unfaithful to you. Really, I am. Right? I couldn't believe it when I found out either. But anyway, I'm breaking it off with her. So now we can get married again. I miss you so much, Irene. Are you drunk, Brian? I've never seen things more clearly than right now, Irene. You and I were made for each other. 
Now once we're married again, will my monthly payments for the lawsuit stop automatically? Or are you gonna have to do some kind of paperwork? I bet if you could talk to your lawyer, he can tell you how it gets done. I doubt it'll be too complicated. It's gonna be so great to start living with you again, baby. Are you still at your parents' house? When can I bring my stuff over? I actually need to get out of my current apartment ASAP. I'm way behind on rent. Oh, and let's go out to have a nice dinner to celebrate. My credit cards are all over their limit, so if you can spot me for tonight, I'll pay you back once I get those other bills paid off. I'm married, Brian. You what? But we've only been divorced for a year! Two months after we divorced, my dad introduced me to the son of one of his co-workers. He'd gotten divorced after his wife cheated on him, so we both know from experience just how important fidelity is in a marriage. Plus, he's a super nice guy, and pretty hot too. We hit things off right away and got married four months after meeting. I'm also pregnant with our first child right now, so things are going pretty well for me. No way. I don't believe this! Hey, wait a second. Now that I think about it... You're just saying that Rachel was cheating on Roger with someone other than you, didn't you? Uh. I'd better tell Roger then. This means he has one more person to sue. Thanks for the tip, Brian. I really appreciate it. Wait, Irene, no! That's not what I wanted to happen! And with that, I'd like to leave you with my favorite Taylor Swift song. We are never, ever, ever getting back together. Now never contact me again, you moron. Irene, please! I told Roger about Rachel's other affair, and he had his lawyers get right to work on finding his identity. It didn't take more than a week to get a name and an address. So now he's in the process of settling a lawsuit with that guy. What's more is that this other guy was married too, and when his wife found out, she divorced him. Now he's got two lawsuits on his hands. When Rachel found out that Brian had spilled the beans about her other affair, she was livid. They got into a massive shouting match, which slowly but surely escalated into an all-out brawl. In the middle of this fight, they both fell down the stairs and hit their heads on the wall. Their neighbors heard the noise and called an ambulance. And when the two of them woke up, they were told that their injuries that they sustained would impact their ability to walk for the rest of their lives. To be honest, I don't really have any pity for them at all. It's really a matter of their chickens coming home to roost. But what did give me concern was the number one victim of Rachel and Brian's heartlessness, the now three-year-old Millie. She was in a bad enough position being raised by those two soulless monsters, but now that they were both permanently and severely handicapped, what was going to happen to her? Fortunately, a family member of Rachel's, who seems to be a pretty good person, decided to take Millie in, and they're currently working on officially adopting her as their daughter. Hopefully they can provide her with the stable and nurturing home environment that she deserves. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe and hit the like button. See you next time.